I'm really honored to share this award with uh, with Gina, and um, and I'm really honored to be in the company of so many amazing uh, thinkers, um, who uh, many of whom are able to join us today. Um, I did not know um, Bob. I corresponded with him, um, but never met him in person. But um, but one of my mentors, Ted Marmer, knew him well, and um, I feel like through this long association with this great organization, I've, I've come to know him. I feel like um, Bob's spirit kind of breathes life into everything that we do. And, um, and I feel that um, deeply uh, as I accept this award in his name. Um, the, um, I, I was thinking back to my long, long association with the Academy. And uh, as was noted, I was on the board and, um, served as vice president, and, and I was reminded that in 2007, I actually organized the annual meeting at which um, we uh, talked about many of the issues that, uh, unfortunately, uh, we're still talking about today. Um, and the two um, other organizers were Regina Jefferson and Maya Rockamore, uh, and this was before she was Maya Rockamore Cummings. Um, and uh, uh, the... Um, I want to use, I'm going to say a few words actually uh, from the speech that I gave back then. Um, but, but first I want to say just a little bit more about um, Bob. I, I, I have to say that maybe that's because I studied under Ted that I was sort of taught that the Holy Trinity um, was, uh, was Altmeyer, um, Ball and Cohen. And, uh, and I never met uh, any of them, but um but I know, um, but there was this sense when you studied with Ted that, um, that there was this wonderful thing, social insurance, that if you did not understand, um, you were missing just a fundamental feature of what made for a good society. And, and, I, and I think that's what the Academy tries to, to convey, and, I, and it's what I deeply believe. Um, so it, I hope it's, this is not too off color of a joke, but... Um, but, uh, you know, some say that Bob Ball believed that social insurance should should be from cradle to grave. And just looking at his commitments, I'd say he believed uh, that social insurance, his belief in social insurance was so strong that it uh, should be from erection to resurrection. Um, OK, <laughs> sorry, that was really bad. But I have another joke. And it's also got a kind of religious scene, but it's not quite as ribald. Um that. And you may have heard this. Stop me if you've heard this. It's, uh, uh, Wilbur Cohen gets to heaven. Um, and he says um, to God, he says, and I'm sure, by the way, if there's a heaven, Bob and Wilbur and Arthur Altmaier are all there. Um, he asked God, will the United States ever have national health insurance? And um, God looks at him and says, not in my lifetime. Um, but I'm not so sure. Um, and, um, <laughs> and I'll say a little more about that in a, in a moment. So my version of cradle to grave insurance seems to be that I got the Nazi dissertation award and now I'm getting the Bob Ball award. So, um, <laughs> but, um, but I'm assured by Bill that it's not a lifetime achievement award. Um, and I really, and then Renee was very kind to say that um, she hopes so as well. Um, so, my dissertation for which I won this award was about America's unique public-private um, welfare regime um, and the degree to which we had come to depend on employers to provide benefits and another rich democracies were provided through social insurance. And this system, I think, uh, is, not very, is still not very well understood. We spend as much as other rich nations on um, the benefits uh, that are in most countries subsumed under this uh, uh, the umbrella of the welfare state, but this system is much less complete. It's much more unequal. It's much less risk spreading. And above all, because it's so heavily reliant on employers' willingness to support uh, and provide benefits, um, willingness that was uh, depended a lot on the pressure of unions, um, it is also unraveling before us. And uh, in 2006, as noted, I wrote about this in a book entitled The Great Risk Shift. Um, and, um, and I pointed out that as employers have outsourced these, um, res their responsibilities and their workers and offshored uh, their uh, production, and as unions have declined in the United States, that this shift of risk onto Americans has played out in almost every domain of economic life, from job security to work-family balance, 
to retirement uh, and health care. And um, what what I want to say in, in before I conclude today is that um, I think that the uh, that while the Affordable Care Act and, um, and which which thankfully sur has survived um, um, the attempts to try to to roll it back uh, a few years back, that the Affordable Care Act was a huge step forward. That we still have a great deal of work to do in in pushing back against this risk shift, and that the COVID crisis has really laid bare and accelerated uh, many of the trends I was writing about there. I mean, that's obvious with unemployment insurance and workplace health insurance. Uh, it's less obvious, but just as real as Gina would surely point out with regard to our uh, risk shifting retirement system, as we've seen workers uh, less and less capable of getting guaranteed benefits that build on Social Security. Um, and as uh, workers are pressured to use their retirement savings to deal with the pressures and, um, and exigencies of a, of a massive economic dislocation. And I think uh, I said this before we began in one of the breakout groups, I think the current crisis has really underscored the extent to which social insurance has to include child care and paid leave, where the United States stands almost alone among rich democracies in the extent to which we treat this as a purely or almost purely personal uh, responsibility. Um, it's now absolutely clear that uh, adequate child care is essential to keeping the economy growing. And um, it's also clear that those who are sick should not be struggling to go to work for fear of termination or immiseration. Um, so right now, we hear a lot that the economy won't really get going again until Americans feel secure again. And I think that's certainly true, but it's always true. Um, and if there's anything that I think that Bob's work and the work of the Academy has shown is that you need to have a strong system of social insurance to have a dynamic capitalist economy. And um, if you don't have it, if you don't have those kind of basic protections, what you get is not a, 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 a society of empowered consumers and self-reliant individuals. You get a system that, uh, uh, you get an environment in which that is ripe for backlash against markets, against vulnerable groups, and, um, and you get um, threats to democracy itself. Denying risks doesn't make them disappear. It, puts, it just puts democracy and markets on a collision course. So I said I would um, say something that I said back in, when I gave uh, a talk in, in the late 2000s. And um, at that time, I, I found this a quote from FDR that doesn't get used very often. On the third anniversary of the Social Security Act, roughly seven, you know, uh, eight, 80 years ago, um, uh, maybe 90 now, um, if, uh, FDR offered uh, one word of warning. He said, in our efforts to provide security for all the American people, let us not allow ourselves to be misled by those who advocate shortcuts to utopia or fantastic financial schemes. We've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. There is still today a frontier that remains unconquered, an America unclaimed. This is the great, the nationwide frontier of insecurity, of human want and fear. This is the frontier, the America we have set ourselves to reclaim. And um, I am so honored to be able to accept this award for, from an organization that has been pushing back this frontier and from a group of people who have committed themselves to a world of greater security and equality for all Americans. Thank you.